Dervla Murphy, traveller and author, lives in Lismore, County Waterford. A couple of years ago, I rang up Lismore Library to see if it might be possible to locate this elusive and very private woman. Bit of a cheek, I know, for an unknown, but nothing dared, nothing gained, and I know that that's Dervla Murphy's own philosophy. I was told kindly but firmly by the librarian that Miss Murphy is publicity shy and did not give interviews and so not wishing to be pushy. I left it at that. But now I've decided to pay my own little tribute to Dervla Murphy to spend some hours in her village to absorb the feel of where she lives. Because of icy roads this morning, I nearly didn't set off. But then I thought... If Dervla Murphy can cross continents and mountain ranges, how can I not make a few hundred miles in a warm car because of a little skid here or there? Lismar, dominated by the 12th century Lismar Castle, the Irish home of the Devonshire family since 1753. It's a Sunday morning, and things are pretty quiet, almost dead, you might say. But this suits the reclusive Dervla Murphy. Leaving school at 14, Dervla was made to keep house and be nursemaid at home for 16 years, a fate she resented. But she took solace in scouring her atlas and secretly plotting the journey she would make one day. After the death of her mother, Dervla realised her childhood dream. And in 1963, she decided to cycle to India. That year, one of the coldest on record in Europe. She cycled in the snow to Cork, caught the ferry, and then proceeded through freezing Europe on her flat-handled Armstrong bicycle with its quarter-inch tyres. Her baggage and bike weighed 36 pounds. This shy and unworldly only child was now a shy and unworldly 31-year-old. Yet she cycled alone through Paris, Milan, Venice, Zagreb, Belgrade, Sofia, Istanbul, Tehran, Meshed, Kabul, Peshawar, Rawalpindi, and Delhi. Sleeping in youth hostels, workers' dorms, Indian pagodas, police barracks, army digs, governor's residences, royal palaces, Himalayan shelters, nomad tents, and out in the open. Neither mountain nor river stood in her way, and she went on and on, relentless. The farther you penetrate into undeveloped countries, the more kindness you meet, wrote Dervler. At times the harsh conditions nearly got the better of her, but she always managed to survive and come out the other side smiling. After her bike had seized up at one point in Yugoslavia, she was walking at night towards a village when she was attacked by wolves. One hung off her shoulder, another went for her ankles, whilst a third bared its teeth growling, waiting for the kill. Dervla quickly drew out her point twenty five pistol and killed the wolf at her shoulder with one shot. She ran the rest of the way to the village where she collapsed. The Iron Curtain presented no problems for her, but in Iraq three elderly men approached her with spades. They tried to steal her bike, but she shot her pistol into the air, and they ran off. In Azerbaijan, a Kurd tried to attack her. The pistol deterred him too. In Armenia, a policeman lured her into a lonely place and tried to rape her. She decided not to use her pistol on him, as hanging would have been the penalty if she'd been caught. So, using knees, nails and teeth, she disabled the man, shot the bolt off the locked door and ran off down the dark alley into daylight. It's amazing to think that the journey was an arduous 4,500 miles. It was an extraordinary feat for an Irish country girl who had spent most of her life in an uneventful small town nursing her parents. Dervla resists being called brave or courageous, preferring the word fearless. If you don't fear... You don't have to be brave, she says. 
though she does admit there were times when she was afraid. In Delhi, Penelope Betjeman, the wife of John, encountered what she described as the startling apparition of Dervler cycling by. She invited Dervler back to her hotel room. Dervler showed her the journals she'd kept on her journey. Penelope was impressed. She urged the London publishers John Murray to take a look at the writings of this unique and rather strange woman. When the time came for Dervler to meet Mr. Murray, she cycled from Lismore to London, and when she found his publishing office in Smart Mayfair, she tied her bicycle to the railings and marched in. I knew immediately she was for us, John Murray later said. Ah, kind of author. And in 1965, Full Tilt was published. And this was to be the start of Dervla Murphy's amazing travel and writing life. It was after a clandestine affair that Dervla had a daughter out of wedlock, and in defiance of a dark Catholic ridden Ireland in the 1960s, she not only reared the daughter herself, but she insisted on taking Rachel on all her travels. Rachel was to accompany her mother on five extended journeys to Pakistan, India, Peru, Madagascar and Cameroon. There were those who felt it was not suitable for a child to be exposed to the dangers of remote villages and endless mountain ranges, but Dervla dismissed the critics as those who holiday and photograph people rather than getting to know them. On her own, she survived long journeys to Peru, Pakistan, Siberia, Romania, Laos and Africa. Her book, The Akimwe Road, is probably my favourite. Akimwe means AIDS, but Dervla didn't know this when she set off on the journey. At the age of 70, Dervla cycled 3,000 miles through Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Malawi, Zambia and Zimbabwe. Gaily ringing her cycle bell as she flew through these vast, often very dangerous countries, she found that people took pity on her because she was white and old, cycling alone. They thought she must be very poor and some sort of grandmother outcast, and they took her in. There were some fraught moments in Africa. In Nairobi she was beaten by paratroopers at a rally, but escaped. She contacted malaria in Zimbabwe and lay 40 miles from a doctor in the bush, an elephant turd for a pillow, but none of this sort of thing ever got Dervla Murphy down for long. Her last journey to date was to Cuba, where she camped in the wilds with her grandchildren. After all that, Dervla Murphy still lives in Lismore enjoying her café creme cigars and Bavarian beer drunk straight from the can. Her home was once the town marketplace. The rooms are converted animal sheds, one beside the other, and you have to walk outside in all weathers to go from one room to the next. There is little or no heating and few comforts. Unlike her guests, Dervla is unfazed by the cold and discomfort of her house. She loves it, declaring she can sleep anywhere, with or without a mattress. It makes no difference to her. Her room is lined with bookcases full of travel-related books, and her electric typewriter on her desk by the window is without a bell, so that the pages fly onto the floor, her publisher, John Murray, complained when visiting. It was winter, and I slept on a hard bed with a light cover. I'd never been so cold in my life, but Dervla noticed nothing. Dervla Murphy's life has alternated between travelling the world and locking herself away here in Lismore to write about it, the phone off the hook. Tucked away behind her gates, she is private and oblivious to the rest of the town. In hot weather, I can run around nude, she smiles. 